Hello, precious people of God. Trust you are doing well by the grace of God. We thank God for yet another day to spend time with Him, another day to commune with Him. I want us to take a short exercise, and that is, I want you to click on that like button to help spread this good news abroad. I want you to help us share this good news, and that YouTube will also recommend this channel, this video to others, and they will also be a blessing. Also, let's take a short reading from Job chapter 38, verses 12. It says, Has thou commanded the morning since thy days, and then caused the day spring to know its place? Now, this tells us of the great opportunities, of the great blessings we enjoy as children of God when we speak into our day. And so it is what we are about to do. Open your heart, be alert, prepare your spirit as we receive inspiring messages from the man of God, Apostle Joshua Selman. Also, if you are new here, hit on that subscribe button for us and then on that notification bell. Keep sharing this message abroad, keep sharing on Facebook, keep sharing on YouTube to invite others to join us as we bless the world. You are a blessing. Thank you. People have come from within the country, from outside the country, inconvenience themselves. You don't want to know the sacrifice that people make week in, week out. Some of them are men of God too. They have their own ego, they have their own pedigree. And they drop that thing aside to come and sit down, to listen, to be blessed, to be mentored. Please, if God ever gives you influence, value it. Is God helping somebody tonight? If God ever makes men to say, I will follow you as you follow Christ, value it. These are the things that when I see sometimes I'm so moved, I'm so touched. Sometimes you see me just sit there and um, I just say, Lord, thank you. You don't have to do this. Many men of God do not have the privilege of being loved across all regions usually there is one region that loves you and then another region that persecutes you harshly with a level of hatred that can almost neutralize the love that you have but god has made this different in my life and this ministry there is no region i have gone to that i'm not genuinely loved it's not normal i go to the east and i'm greatly loved i go to the west the south here the middle belt in fact the bible you know the bible says a prophet has is not without honor except in his hometown but the case is very different here i am deeply loved even within this place and i truly 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 value it hallelujah there are very few men of god and i tell you this very few men of god who operate in the level and the dimension of the gift of the spirit and a ministry like this who are not openly persecuted you don't walk in there is a level of the spirit that if you walk above just get set to be in in everybody's negative book you see that but of course not everybody will love you and believe in you but let's be honest let's be honest even those who probably if at all talk against me they don't really hate me some are just ignorant or maybe intimidated or maybe frustrated there are few people who are honestly truly speaking you say i mean i hate this person and i i want us to 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 understand this i want you to know that i value and appreciate everyone i really do you know, men of God, we are proud people and most times we act as if with or without the members, um, we are all right. It's not true. It's not true. It's just a psychological way of trying to let the members not take advantage of us. But I cannot come here and speak to cheers. No matter how anointed I am, you are the seal of my apostleship. It's, 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 it's really... Thank you. Thank you very much. You truly are. It's amazing. Only God knows how many battles I would have fought that some of you fought it and won and kept quiet. Are we together? I saw that grace. 
in Billy Graham. The grace that makes a man accepted in every region. The only man of God that preached in North Korea. I saw that same grace in Reinhard Bonke. It was one of the things that took me to Joss to passionately. I, I don't want to carry the truth and have to be explaining to everybody. Do you know how painful it is to be misunderstood? There is a grace. There are spirits that are responsible for misunderstanding a man and an anointing. Did you know something as little as this? Just this. Someone alone can say this is occultic power. This is demonic this. It, there is a spirit that blinds the eyes of people. So that no, your good is evil spoken of. Are we together? You can sow a seed to someone. They will say you are trying to bribe the family. Are, are you not seeing? Am I the only ones? There are people that have. The, they are sincere. But never believed. They bless you. They are persecuted for blessing you. They heal the sick and pay the price. They open a branch and pay the price. It takes grace to be loved. Not good intention. My parents were right when they named me the way to love. They saw very far. So when people love you, I have been moved the last few weeks. Look at the concert we held. It mean that rain and I saw many of you jumping up and down and rejoicing. No. It's a grace. It's a grace. The race is not to the swift. There are very anointed men of God that someone would prefer to listen to the tape than to come and sit down physically. So why do I have to travel that far and leave all the men of God in my city to come and sit down? You know, someone was talking to me and said, Apostle, I think you spend too much time seeing people after service. You go home past 12. It's not fair. And I said, oh dear. I know how constraining it is for me. Sometimes I'm coming from another meeting. But this is the least I can do to these dear people. Some of them come from as early as 12. And they sit, they pray for me. They sow into my life. How busy can I get? What else will I be doing? It's true. I will cancel any meeting a thousand times to make sure you are trained, you are built, you are mentored. I rather fail, sincerely speaking. God, you are spiritual people. I'm not a politician. I rather fail so that you will succeed. Because if you succeed by me failing, then I succeeded. It's true. There is nobody, let me tell you, that I don't believe in. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help my heart to receive. Help my heart to be open. You are being trained and mentored to become something. You may not look like it now, but brothers and sisters, you just follow with humility. It may take time. You may compare your life with others and it may look as if you are slow. You just follow and let time tell where God is taking you to. Please pray. Lord, the grace to listen. Yes, I know I'm a man of God. I know I have revelation. I know I have anointing. But Lord, the grace to listen. The grace to see beyond a man. Lord, I receive grace to be committed. I reject every suggestion by Satan to alienate me from what you are doing in this season. Lord, I know that you are calling me to an extraordinary ministry. There is a reason why you have planted me here. There is a reason why you are equipping me. I may not have all the money that I need now. Others may seem to have gone ahead of me, but like Jesus walking on water, I know you are taking me some. He lead me. <laughs> 
and guide me to the city of love. He'll lead me and guide me to my place of destiny. In the name of rushing to look for results. You are a man of God here. Pray that prayer twice. Lord, may I, may I resist the pressure of premature manifestation. May I resist the pressure of pride and arrogance. Your life may look slower than the normal pace. But when God is done with you, you will find out that what you would have been doing has already been done in your obedience. Lift your voice and pray. It's a costly thing to go ahead of God. It's a costly thing to preach ahead of God. It's a costly thing to move ahead of God. The Bible says with God, not before God. With God when you walk with Him. There's an old hymn that says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, not when we go ahead of him. Men will force you to move ahead of seasons in your life. They will make you do things God is not saying. They will pressure you to open doors God is not opening. And destroy you and laugh at you when you fall. But happy is the man that can sustain the stamina to walk at God's pace. Please pray, Lord, the grace. How la ba kaso de bela hatsana malakatush. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, a particular friend. A pastor friend then he met me then koinonia had not started we just used to hold the weekly programs then on campus and he met me one day and said man of god you need to go for tv ministry the level of your anointing even some bishops don't have that's supposed to be a good advice the same advice of peter jesus don't die you are too innocent to go to the cross and that advice looked like a nice advice. And they just felt you are on that. Please, write books. Do this. Do that. And every time I went to the Lord, the Lord made me know that, Son, it is within my power to make you anything. So if I don't, it's because there is a time appointed. People told me, why don't you start a church? Do something. Do this, do that, start TV ministry, buy a car, buy this, buy that. You see, let me tell you, the steps of a spiritual man is very strange. A spiritual man is not a natural man. Don't sit down, you, how you know you are spiritual is the pathway of your life is meticulously guarded by the will of God. Others can go the way they want, but God says, remember anytime I look at you, there is a nation in you. So they can, you, it is your obedience that will correct their mistakes. They can go, but you can't just go like them. There are some of you, you started your spiritual work with the same level with many others that have churches and branches today. And sometimes they may look at you and say, man of God, you are the one who mentored us and God says, sit down. I know what I'm doing with you. 
because when I'm done with you, there are certain kinds of graces and mantles that must come. And God says, sit down. Are we together? Please, I want you to listen. Men will mock you. They will misunderstand you. There is nothing unusual. We just are not students of history. That's why this thing surprises us. Go and read the Bible. Any great vision is fought by hell. You see why your life is fought by hell? The devil will fight you tooth and nail because he would rather you die. In your death is the death of a generation. So he would rather you die. Instead of killing the generation one by one, he says, kill Moses. Instead of killing the entire earth, human race, kill Jesus. Let me tell you this. This is a sensitive season in the spirit. Satan is not looking for everybody. There are people he will pass looking for others. Your, your, your destiny, if the devil ever stops to consider you, there's something he's seeing. It's not just, I will live long, I will live old. No, there are people here, listen to me. Satan stopped attacking your family and turned to you because he found out, out of everything he searched, he found out if I can destroy her prayer life, if I can destroy the anointing that I'm seeing, this man of God is surely a prophet of God. He does not even know it. But if I can kill that grace, then there is no need fighting 120 people. There is no need of fighting a Decapolis if it can make one man mad. And so because of that, listen, the devil will fight you. You may want to get up and come for koinonia and the devil relax now. Can't you get the tape afterwards? It's an attack. It's an attack. People will mock you sometimes and say you have been going to church. What is it to show for your life? No job, no house. Everybody is moving forward and they are leaving you and you feel stupid for staying with God. This my God? Ah. He is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh. and the poor to you god is giving you something that you will never be ashamed of it's not something you will use for 10 years and need another thing no there are see listen you can get a degree you can get a master's you can get a phd and life will evolve such that what you studied may no longer be useful it is possible you can start a business and your product life evolves such that your product is no longer needed like a typewriter are we together every other thing in life needs constant evolution but when you know him when you find him when he anoints you my brother you stay through any time there is no mortal man who can edge you out of the systems of God they can believe you are gone God will show them you are still there listen years ago when God was training me I remember one of the things that God told me he said son 
take your eyes away from the vanities of men the flamboyancy of ministry you just stay with me let me teach you there are many things i would later learn in my life i didn't know that was what the holy spirit was teaching me the holy spirit is a priceless asset don't mind the ignorant people that make it look like it doesn't pay to follow him you will look stupid while you follow him but when he's done with you he will bring beauty and glory they will look at you and your life will be Beulah and Hephzibah. You can do ministry the way you want to do. You can believe you have all the revelation you need and all the anointing. You just start going. On the way, you will see what dimensions of the kingdom you have ignored. And the price you will have to pay. And the price you will make others pay. For not paying attention. It's not enough to be called. It's not enough to feel trained. It's not enough to feel ready. You must be approved of God. Our level of carnality in this generation is becoming very serious. We ignore the voice of God. We just want to do things and get up and do it. No respect for the timing of God. No respect for spiritual things. Listen. Listen. We live by common sense. We run by principles, but we fly by instructions. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you want to walk in life one step, you can use brain work. Brain work is how many people want to achieve their destiny. The time in your life is too short to use brain work to be great. Then you use principles to run. But if it is flight, you will have to work on instructions. Those who teach pilots are not called teachers. They are not called lecturers. They are not called advisors. They are called instructors. Please sit down. Let's go to the word. I just, I just thought to, to just allow the Holy Spirit to talk to us. You know, when, when people see the anointing of the Spirit upon my life, many people believe it's just luck. I was just fortunate to be anointed. Or I was just called and ordained to be anointed. Or I was just fortunate to meet anointed people. And God anointed me. You really believe that? There are people who know nothing about the anointing. But then they will tell you, don't mind all these people. And yet you don't, we see, wisdom is justified by her children. Brothers and sisters, it is God that is the confirmer of everything. If God is not confirming something in your life, then listen to the person he's confirming something in his life. Are we together? One of the most dangerous things that can happen to a man is pride. You, you keep hearing me say this thing all the time. Pride is not just wrong. It truly is evil. You will watch yourself entering a pit and going down per second per second. Yet pride will make you believe you are in control. You are in charge. I am very open. To want to know the areas in my life where I am ignorant. Because if I don't pay attention to them, that would be the advantage of Satan in my life. So I like to know, what don't I know? Thank God for the one I know, but what don't I know? I'm, I'm like a spiritual archaeologist. I don't want God to be this way and I'm there jumping. What else am I doing? Because I've learned through experience that the secret to a man's relevance, not his making heaven, his relevance is to be where God is. You can make heaven whether you are where God is or not. I just want to be where you are. You know that song? Dwell in your presence. I don't want to worship from afar.
I want to be where you are, dwelling in your presence, feasting at your table, surrounded by your glory, in your presence, that's where I always want. Someone here, God is saying, Be careful. I want to announce you greater than you want to announce yourself, but just be patient. Others may announce themselves and say, Look, I am sent of God. My father is a priest. We are the sons of Skiva. And the demons say, No, we don't know you. But God can look at you and say, I'm announcing this, my daughter. I'm announcing this, my son. It may cost you some momentary inconvenience. Don't mind it. Which woman loses her baby just because of birth pains? In spite of the fact that the baby, she's carrying a child and is inconveniencing. She may be tired and almost want to give up. But she knows that very soon. And when that woman's delivery time is come, she may go through all kinds of constraints. But when that child comes... People who were not supposed to come and visit will find their way. And they will not just come alone, they will come with gifts. Don't invite people into your life when the child is not born. Nobody comes to greet you when you are pregnant. If you can stay through when the child comes, then you deserve every gift. The wise men were around, but they never came to Mary. It was after Jesus was born. The Magi, they came. The Bible says they brought, they came and bowed down before a baby. Not before Mary or Joseph. They bowed down before a baby and brought gifts of, of gold, of frankincense and myrrh. When you stay with God and birth what he's put in. And you see, God doesn't do nine months pregnancy. The pregnancy depends on many things. You can carry a child for five years. The first child can be delivered in four months and then the second child in seven years. This is God for you. Are we together? The first child can just be something that is very simple in the spirit. But the second child can be the core of your anointing. You will stay there. Someone can have seven births of spiritual reality. And you stay with one forever. As if it's caused. But when that child comes, you will find out that all those seven will need that one child to be able to live. That's why you had to stay that long. When they looked at the womb of her with child, they said there are two nations, not two babies. Two nations. Hallelujah. So pay attention. You are not just here to receive tea and bread. You don't need to put yourself under this kind of constraint if all you need in life is tea and bread. What God is giving you in this place is more than tea and bread. It's more than just a successful life. As important as it is. It's more than just prosperity. In as much as we know prosperity. It's more than just influence. God is giving you something. That cannot be bought in any market on earth. He's putting something in your life. That makes it impossible. For some of you what you are receiving is the remedy for these complexes. And all this inferiority that our families have put in us. For when you have something that only God can provide, then men must look for you. That's what he's giving. You are planning to save to buy a house. He's giving you what will make house owners come to you and say, can I have the privilege of having you in my estate? God is showing you a more excellent approach to life. It looks strange because it's not a mainstream approach to life. But you walk with God and see. A time will come you will turn back and not have needs again. And you say, Lord, what did he do? I say, it's a more excellent way. You follow the way men, men follow to be established, to live their lives. You are going to leave God somewhere in your equation. Especially in our generation. You must leave God somewhere. But when he guides you, when he leads you. 
Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pray in the Spirit for one minute. And say, Lord, open my eyes through your word tonight. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm preaching a message I titled Spiritual Stability. Please listen to this message. It's a powerful message and it will bless you. Spiritual Stability three scriptures first corinthians 15 and verse 58 spiritual stability i didn't have any divine revelation for this message but the message has come as a response to a need that i've seen in the body of christ that we need to explore the keys that are responsible for being grounded and being established in spiritual things are we together the teaching is an attempt to address the vacillations that we continually experience in our work with God based on a number of factors that we are going to be discussing that a believer can not only grow but can become stable are we together Yes. So it's, it's, it's an attempt to explore the keys to a grounded and productive Christian life. It matters to you and matters to God that your Christian life be grounded and productive. The Bible declares once and again that herein is our Father glorified. It says when we bear much fruit it says that we produce fruit and that our fruits abide are we together three scriptures very quickly follow me tonight i hope we are able to finish it tonight therefore my beloved brethren be ye steadfast unmovable then it says always abounding in the work of the lord for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the lord Paul is speaking here to the church in Corinth and he's telling believers that they be steadfast and then unmovable, unshakable, unbendable. So it is possible that a man can be stable in his Christian experience. Ephesians chapter 4, please, and verse 14. The Bible, speaking about the fivefold ministry, it says that we henceforth the matured ones the ones who have been built now by the gifts that the that, that, that god has supplied the body that we henceforth be no more what please talk to me children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive so there is a level of spiritual stability that a believer can get he can attain onto a realm and a level in his work with god where you are unbendable where you you are so fortified that deception becomes an impossible experience for you it is possible one more scripture and then we'll begin to teach colossians chapter 2 please we'll read from verse 6 to 8 colossians chapter 2 it says as ye therefore received christ jesus the lord so walk ye in him we're reading to verse 8 7 it says rooted read with me rooted and built up in him stop there notice it didn't just say built up rooted and then built up in him and established in the faith as he have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving verse 8 beware so you are not just being aware just by an information something you are doing in verse 7 
is what will sustain this lest any man spoil you these are the various ways that men can be made to vacillate spiritually ready through number one is what please talk to me philosophy and then vain deceit and then the traditions of men and then the redoments another word there is the patterns the modus operandi the system of operation of this world and not after Christ it is possible that a man can live his life manifesting the knowledge that just comes through philosophy and then vain deceit and then the tradition of men and then the redoments of this world you can believe this today and then tradition tells you no things are done this way and then you readjust your life to suit tradition are we together and while you are trying to gain stability through tradition all of a sudden the rudiments of this world these are the things that destroy us they say this is how they do it in life you don't even know who puts that room no this is how they do it this is how they do this this is how parenting happens this is how marriage happens this is how prosperity happens this is how ministry is done the bible says beware prophesy to yourself say beware he said lest any man so who are the men who are the people the vessels that the devil uses they are not just angels they are men let any man spoil you the word spoil you there doesn't mean corrupt the word spoil you means to plunder to steal from you like an asset something of treasure has been given to you and then a man comes to spoil you like you come and rob a man and carry everything that is treasurable he said beware that means you are possessing something that has potential something of worth but beware lest men come sometimes innocently but they are in the similitude of robbers they can spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit and the tradition of men and the redoments this is the one that even disturbs me the most the redoments of this world this is how it is done it's amazing how many people's destinies have been wrong perpetually they one of the ways that people have become failures in life is by aligning to a tradition and a pattern that has been obeyed for a long time but is wrong just because someone did something and kept doing it kept doing it for decades they can tell you this is it in this family nobody really you all this your jesus thing we love jesus and you the person who is talking is not very serious with god and he's marketing his template of spirituality to you and every time you show any unusual passion they say see we did this thing and left it the regiments of this world and people even turn scriptures in the bible and say see the bible even said don't be over uh, what, what, over righteous over spiritual and the person who is sharing that thing doesn't love the word of god he just found a scripture that will give him a basis for laxity and unseriousness a man can be stable spiritually as a man of God it's important to realize that you are mentoring and building people based on the truth you are convicted about let me tell you this not everybody can receive the correction that you propose after receiving your error not everybody will be alive and within your reach are we together if i teach you come if i teach you something erroneous now and 10 years down the line this brother goes abroad and he's in the u.s he has institutionalized that error and he's paying the price life is whipping him for it and i later go and find the truth and i say people sorry what i said 10 years ago is a mistake this guy may never live to hear it he will still be carrying the mindset of me of 10 years ago and even when god is telling him adjust he said no way apostle said this that's why it is important that men of god we become the first guinea pigs to our revelations before propose it's not just anything you hear on tape and anything you feel is nice or anything by a man of god you love and respect you just ship and just spill everything to your people 
when people are loyal to you that means they have come to a point where either through a track record or a divine revelation they have come to accept your word as the word of god over their lives so they have opened up their spirits that any communication that comes from this man of god should be received subconsciously they have come to a point where they they have they have found comfort in following you as you follow after christ and you have a responsibility to probe and vet every revelation that is communicated to make sure it is worthy of giving to a generation not just members beware thank you lest any man spoil you are we together through philosophy vain deceit traditions of men and the rudiments of this world and not after christ it's amazing how you see people believe this today and they don't believe this tomorrow today i believe deliverance tomorrow i don't believe deliverance today i believe prosperity then i read one book by somebody i respect and all of a sudden i hate money next tomorrow i believe the gifts of the spirit the day after i believe common sense next tomorrow i believe divine direction the next ah, ah. no those those vacillations are very very dangerous you must be established to know that you can look at your children and say children before you were born this was what i stood for and even now as i am old i'm standing for this i called god a faithful god when i was 18 i am 85 he's still a faithful god i have not created another wrong name based on an experience that's the goal of this teaching and i'm going to share with you three keys that the lord or four that god has put in my heart keys that will create stability in your christian life because you see the internet social media um christian channels and all kinds of spiritual platforms right now on one hand they have benefited the body of christ but on another hand they have created gross confusion there are many people you have heard people you love and respect say things that have almost rattled the foundation of your convictions it's easy to resent somebody you don't believe but what happens when you hear someone who you love so much is saying and doing and standing for things that now makes you confused and so i must share with you otherwise we are going to be in serious trouble especially as a man of god here there is no guarantee that the person you look up to will continue to stand straight so in as much as you look up to people it's important to create a system are we together otherwise we are going to be in trouble you follow men as they follow christ not just as they go before you you follow men as they follow christ meaning that the day you don't see christ before them you are permitted to leave him this is this is this in itself this thing i just said in itself can bring me a lot of trouble because sometimes we men of god teach people that trying to probe whether you are still following christ as they follow you can draw a cost to their life and even when people have long left the things of god they still demand loyalty from people no you follow a man of god as he follows christ if you're with me say amen. amen the first key that you need to have stability in your christian experience and please i don't want you to forget this the first key is an experiential revelation of god write it down an experiential revelation of god i can spend the whole night talking here if 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 we're unable to to exhaust this within the time we have then we can just have part two of it an experiential revelation of god look up please there is the experience of the kingdom john chapter 3 when you read um from verse from verse 1 down to 3 let's let's go to verse 3 but nicodemus comes to jesus by night and says to him rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God he says he says for no man can do these things except God be with him and then verse 3 John ah uh, okay keep verse 3 Jesus answered and said unto him verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom take note of the word see 
Verse 4. Nicodemus now says, Can a man be born when he's old? You know, can he enter into his mother's womb the second time? And then verse 5, Jesus clarifies and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, then he changes his terminology. He cannot enter the kingdom of God. He's talking about two related but different experiences there to see the kingdom and to enter the kingdom there is an experience of god listen very carefully there is an experience there is the knowledge of god a theoretical knowledge which is not wrong in itself are we together but there is the experience the experience of god the bible says oh taste and see not just hear and believe there is a place you hear but there is a place you can taste you can see your sensory perceptions can participate in your knowing god brothers and sisters the times that we are living in will require you knowing a god that you have an experience over it's good to know joshua selman's god it's good to know this and that man of God's God. But you must come to a point where you glean from their own experience and then create a road map through it until he becomes your God. Are we together? The experiential revelation of God. The Bible says, and the people that do know their God, not the people that do hear that there is a God. The heathens heard already about the God of the Hebrews. But they did not know him. Let, let me tell you this. Your life will be at the mercy of your experiential revelation of who God is to you. And there are three ways that God is revealed experientially. In fact, I think there's a message that I preached some years knowing God experientially. You can get that message. It will bless you in no small way. But three major ways. Ready? Number one. The first way to have an experiential revelation of God is through his word, the written word. 1 Samuel 3.21 1 Samuel 3.21 God can give men encounters through his word. I told you that the word of God, the logos, are we together? Just keep the scripture there. But make reference quickly on your notes to John 1 verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The Greek word there is logos. The logos of God, the thoughts of God. A compendium of his character, his methodology. Encapsulated in a material. So that as you study that material, you not only cram scripture, but it expands your spiritual horizon to understand how God behaves. The logos. A man can experience God through his word. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh, for the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. So God can use his word to reveal himself. You can know his character based on his word. I know Sam. Come Sam. I know Sam, I've worked with Sam for many years. He's an amazing gentleman and I love him very much. Because I have interacted with him very much. Are we together? There is something that someone can come and meet me now and say, Apostle, Sam said I should tell you A, B, C. I will make reference to the track record of my working with him. Are we together? And know whether Sam can say this or not. I would rather be wrong and say sorry to that person. But as far as that information is concerned, I can throw it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the word of God is a revelation. Um, one of our dear media ladies, I, I, I was during my birthday. She has a blog page and wonderful blog page, by the way. You can you honestly would want to just go to her blog page very rich wonderful materials and that lady i can't even remember the name of the blog page it was it was shown me and i went through it and she wrote certain quotes or certain things that that i say that has inspired i didn't even know that i've stressed those points that much to become a quote are we together now if one young man gets up and say i know apostle Apostle is my spiritual father, I'm apostle is my this, my apostle is my mother, is my uncle, is my sister, and says all those kinds of things. And they say two quotes from him, and he just says one kind of thing. He said, No, it's Miles Muro that said this one now. It's not. <laughs> Are you seeing that now? Automatically, you know that this guy is a liar. 
If someone says, I attend Koinonia every time, there are a few tests, very few litmus tests. I mean, you don't need to, you can't fake it. Just, there are very few things, anybody at all, even if you are not a faithful member, there are just certain things. You can know that, no, it's a lie. Someone attends Koinonia, hear someone shout and say, what's happening? He say, ah, I thought you said you attend this. You are not, something is betraying you somewhere. So the logos of God, thank you, Sam. The word of God was not just given for us to cry. It's a compendium of his way of behavior through different dispensations. So that as we study, we have the mind of Christ. Are we together? We have an understanding of the way he behaves. So the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by the word. Number two, the way, remember we're still on point one now. I hope, I hope I'm not confusing you. You can call it point A, through his word. B, the second way experiential revelation of God is given to the saints. Now pay attention. Is through the family of believers. Your interaction with the family of believers. What the Bible calls the household of faith. Many people do not know that your interaction with a kingdom community of believers can help you experience God. Mm. The family of true believers, the household of faith, is one of the platforms that God designed for men to encounter Him experientially. A number of scriptures, Acts chapter 2, please. We'll read 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly. Listen carefully. Who are the they? The community of believers. Is that true? The Bible says steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And what? Talk to me. And fellowship. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. We are reading to 47, 43. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. 44. And all that believed were what? All that believed were not apart there was a community system so this issue of kingdom community I have I have proposed again and again that the keys to maintaining kingdom values one of the keys is to create a community of believers no believer can truly become matured in the spirit in isolation you must be grafted to a family of faith that is territorial are we together and all that believed were together and had all things in common. 45. They sold their possession and their goods and parted them all uh, to all men, uh, you know, as everyone had a need. 46. And they, listen, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from what? House to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. What was the result? 47. Praising God, the Bible says, and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to the church daily as should be saved. That means God was supporting that community life. Saying you are getting it right. Everywhere there is a community of believers that is a platform that was created by God to see that believers rise, continue to grow. The benefit they get is God's support by adding daily, not weekly, not monthly, not per fellowship, daily. They were praising God, having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the church. He calls them the church. Daily, such as should be saved. The family of faith. Galatians 6 verse 10. Where we get the word household of faith. Very powerful scripture. Then give us Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. I'm giving you scriptures like this because I want to support what I'm teaching intelligently. There are all kinds of people. We minister to people from different nations now. If Let me teach you this. This is a place for mentorship, so we believe in excellence, but I want you to learn the motivation behind the things that I do. You see, when you begin to mentor people 
who come from different geographic and cultural context. I can talk to all of you without bringing one scripture because there is a track record of your understanding my pattern of teaching are we together you know that every time i speak i will support it but maybe in france or the u.s or somewhere someone right now who may be hedonistic is listening and just has a bible or an unbeliever a muslim who just gave his life to christ so you will need to support these points they may look basic to you oh one point is enough apostle i'm convinced but i'm not just talking to you alone when you begin to minister at a global level you must have the patience and the simplicity to carry the larger crowd of people along otherwise a time will come your doctrine will only be understood by those who are close to you and that is because of the track record you have created are you getting this now so galatians 6 verse 10 it says as we therefore as we have therefore opportunity let us do good to how many men all men but it says let your focus be on a community of believers this those who are of the household of faith you encounter god through a spiritual community life let me tell you this you have a spiritual family just like a physical family and the spiritual family of course ultimately is our family connected to god but on earth and territorially you will never prosper spiritually if you are not connected to a larger body of a spiritual family god designed it that way are we together there are all kinds of spiritual possibilities that are vested broadly speaking in the body of christ but uniquely speaking to the spiritual family that god connects to you friends revelation access to anointing access to help there are many believers when they are in trouble for instance and they need to see the mercy of god there is no man and there is no community to come and reveal the mercy of god to them someone dies you are alone nobody to come and greet you you give birth to a child nobody you are not part of any larger body of believers that can be sympathetic to what you are doing when you need to see the hand of god you are not connected to anyone most times when people come and talk to me and say apostle this is a, somebody a member of koinonia and all of that most times i ask what department he says ah, i'm not in any department but i can assure you i'm faithful say, ah, you are marking yourself already how do you know you are faithful community life is very powerful when it has to do with experiencing god a, a spiritual family shields you there are some of us here right now physically you almost don't have a family either everybody has died or everybody is completely wayward and not of god or everybody hates you and already you are just like a prodigal son but for a good reason until you find god don't come back home are we together some of us are unbelievers we are the first christians in our family so you really don't have you can't stand there in isolation look at this how many of you have seen charcoal burning coal burning red hot coal remove one red hot one and just keep it don't off the uh, what they call it now just leave it there don't pour water on it after a while what happens it starts going down so the strength of that fire was the community life notice that every time satan wants to destroy a life one of the ways is he will make everybody in your community your enemy he will make you to have problem with everyone your head of department apostle anybody when all your helpers have been driven through your hatred when you are alone it's not only god that comes to jacob when he's alone satan too comes when you are alone he can come to you and say now that the person who can pray for you is gone now that the sister that can support you you have you have hated her and you have insulted her i can now strike you and your pride will not allow you run to them so you will stay there till they find your dead body spiritually community life is powerful are we together now when the believers were afraid and they were persecuted imagine if all of them hid one by one they went somewhere and stayed alone even in times of crisis as in physically speaking the security when people are clustered within an area it becomes even if they are afraid it becomes difficult for the enemy to just break every siege there some of us stand alone 
and do everything alone and we flatter ourselves into believing that we are strong my bible says two are better than one is that true the bible says then when they become three they become a, a cord that cannot be easily broken community life is a powerful system to have an experience of god when you come into the sanctuary there are dimensions of god that you ordinarily would not have gotten in your personal place of prayer but god reveals himself as the word of god is coming now as you look at your brother someone taking the testimony promise is coming to take the testimony you are learning something about god somebody is doing this you are learning something they raise a song of worship you see a jimmy worshiping wow so great men can worship god this vocally you are what the the worship team revealing the excellence of god there are things you will never learn just sitting down in your room are we together listen let me tell you this let us encourage and, and i'm saying this from a personal point encourage your children to have a desire for the house of god not just the things of god there are families here that come as a family for koinonia i truly am honored when i see that because it's, it's not just a sacrifice they are salvaging a generation especially some of these are young children some of them hate god the devil is planting a seed of hatred in them have you seen them they come to the house of god they never enter and sit down they stroll around they they hang around they move around they are making calls they are doing this if they say something that is funny they laugh outside and then they turn they continue you give them offering they go and buy uh, uh what do we call it puff puff around and they are eating let's not let's not it's not a laughing matter it's a sign that we are losing something are we together the house of god so you go home now and you say let's pray see the child frowning his face he's coming to sit down it's time for prayer i say please this prayer that they are lying in this house it's better to be lying with prayer it's better community life community life Hebrews 10 25 Hebrews 10 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is he said but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching are we together that we should not forget and forsake the assembly of ourselves you've heard me listen to my message um preservers of divine ordinances part one and two i teach there that any spiritual environment is bankrupt if there is no platform that can create a convergence of believers for the purpose of training equipping and mentorship you can look at a territory and know that there are no apostolic and prophetic voices because there is no platform honored by god you see his signature there as a prophetic platform that has nothing to do with denominational barriers you know that this one is god making his presence known mentoring a territory to know him it's not just tied to i am this i am that i'm apostle this i'm prophet this i'm apostle joshua Selma. no there has to be a, a platform where believers are mentored where they grow are we together Let's read one more scripture. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 12 and 13. And then we'll move to something that I think um, we can just stop at point one. I don't know. I don't know. Let's see how God will help us. So you have an experiential revelation of God. That's the first key. And that by his word, number one. Number two, by the presence, your participation in the household of faith. Hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12. Take heed, brethren, look up please. Lest there be any of you, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief, 
in departing from the living God. Next verse, 13. But exhort one another. How long? Exhort one another, not exhort God. Exhort one another. That means I have a role to play in your spiritual growth. You have a role to play in my life. You will think that because I am the one who is majorly building you, you don't have any role. He said, exhort one another. Daily, while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. That means something happens. Come, Pastor Femi. That Pastor Femi can be a powerful believer, but in isolation to the supply of the body. Are we together now? There is no system of exhortation. He may not even know when he has veered off sincerely and not know, but that the presence of the corporate body is a spiritual system for check and balance. Are you getting what I'm saying now? You may not know. You may be busy, Pastor Femi, and maybe have two months of ministration all around and not have the time to pray, for instance, and you may be justifying yourself. But when you come now and see that I'm busier than you and yet I'm still praying, by that act, I have exhorted you. I have killed the excuse the devil wants to take to say, I am busy. You go back and say, no, if I'm just doing one ministration per week, and it's affecting my prayer life. Someone that is doing three. Are you seeing that now? Yeah. The moment you want to become proud and arrogant, I just got one million. And then you come and turn and you see a Jimmy lying down. Ah, and you say, How much is his shirt? How much is his shoe? You just say, I, I better drop my, my small one million that is entering my head and lie down and roll before God. You are exhorting. You don't just exhort by talking, your life shows it too. When you see people that love God more than you rolling on the ground, sometimes you don't plan to roll. But when you look around, ah, Benga is kneeling. Ah, Daddy Prof is kneeling. Hey, Jimmy is rolling. Promise is rolling. You turn back, Sam is kneeling. You will feel stupid. I say, what I say, do it. Better join and kneel down. Those outside are falling more than those inside. Are we together? Yes. It is the absence of this corporate life that makes local champions leave God. There is no system. Have, when, when you start making money and you go where wealthy people are worshipping God, they throw their phone away and roll on the floor. You just stand and say, this is my boss. This is the person that gave me the job that I've been testifying. I heard she was a millionaire before I was born. So this is how this woman rose before God. You call your wife and say, wife, we will roll on that carpet. Roll on the ground. Sometimes you need someone higher than you to show you how to serve God. Because you see, every time you have results, sometimes they confuse you. How do I serve God at this new level? And God says, come to the house of God. I started prophesying. And right now, one month, everybody is placing a demand on my grace. And then God says, oh yeah, come and meet a prophet who started prophesying before you were born again and see how he serves God. And all of a sudden, you are dancing. I got an award. And this award is this and that. And God says, come, let me show you the person who owns the company that gives the award and how he's serving God. Corporate life does so much. Many things happen in this service beyond the pulpit. You can have a heart of wickedness to annoy a brother or sister and all of a sudden they use their kindness and torture you all through the service. You say nasty things, they say, no problem, it's well. This is my seat. I say, no, okay, sit down. And while they sit down, favor just come. Somebody says, sit, sit here. Every bad thing you are doing, God is speaking to you in that service with results. Your message in that service becomes, look, it is, it is good to be good. This bad attitude, work on it. You will be surprised. I may be teaching on the anointing, but that's the message. You came to the house of God. There are many believers that are not like Christians because they are alienated from the house of God. They cannot. Do you know that the house of God even helps you to speak well? I mean educationally. I'm not talking of spiritually. Many dull people around who have alienated. When you listen to a man, you listen to a people that have some measure of excellence. Do you know that it will affect you? Many people, look at our, 
look at the children in koinonia you see how intelligent they are because they are gleaning from adults they go back and meet their their colleagues who don't they are not smart they they, they just fail everything like that and say ah, what is wrong that's why the children of pastors are very intelligent because from birth everybody holding them is praying or speaking or blessing they don't have the opportunity for wickedness to touch them that's why satan keeps timing them you are in the house of god turn to your neighbor and say this and that turn to your neighbor and do this you can even help socialize you came from a bad background where you even hate yourself you came to the house of god and you are somebody who is shy you can't turn and tell somebody god bless you and before you know it someone carries his hand gives you a big hug and you're like ah so this is how this thing is by next sunday you are ready come on now talk to me koinonia watch this the first person who ever hugged you was somebody in the house of god and you felt so bad you thought there were strings attached until they told you that's how they are here and you say really and somebody looks at you and says the lord told me you never knew that god can speak to men to bless you but someone just turns and says pastor femi um i don't know are you a first timer yes the lord asked me to give you ten thousand whereas you came god told you to leave your house and come by faith that someone will pay your transport if you didn't come to the house of god you will never experience god that way are you getting what i'm saying when you neglect the gathering of the saints it is not the same thing as listening to a tape there are things your eyes need to see there are things your ears need to hear i believe it's even one of the reasons hey Jimmy, why our generation keeps marrying bad wives and husbands where are you going to get a good wife let's be very sincere your chances of getting a very good god remember you need to marry somebody who believes what you are what you believe you pray in tongues and somebody say i'm calling police is, is that marriage how or the man wants to swear and say for what how much are we earning that we're going to sow? because you don't understand these principles take seriously what i'm saying many believers I, I don't know sometimes i don't know what is wrong with us we come and we sit down and then we go outside go and ship all versions of unbelievers bring into our lives and the devil said thank you that one thing i've been looking for to cheat you in life you finally gave me ah the brothers in church are not nice the sisters in church let me tell you it's better to die in church oh. let me just give you a very honest statement because god is always found in the midst of the lampstands if a brother slaps you in church there's somebody he submits to you can report if your if your wicked bubble somewhere slaps you who will you report to his father listen hallelujah sit down as as you are hearing me you see god is saying many things this night but there are many stubborn believers that as God is talking now, you have programmed your spirit to be as hardened as whatever. May you be delivered this night in the name of Jesus. Don't allow any, any unbeliever somewhere, just go and fool you and laugh around and say, oh, don't mind all these God people. You are going to your church again. Haba, you can't make this sacrifice for me. That's already a Luciferian spirit. It's a revelation to run away fast. He has not married you he is he's, he's stopping he's resenting a man of god the man of god that is training and building you i say no don't mind all these people and you are truly you are not minding them say the house of god people have gotten jobs because of their connection is that true with christian families please learn this thing many of our loved ones are suffering in pride because there is a dimension of the love and the mercy of god in the house of god that they have ignored by god's grace in this ministry as you know we have a system that provides help for people it may be in limited ways but at least we make sure we do there are people just being members of koinonia their school fees were settled till they graduated they didn't come from families that could allow that and they saw the love of god 
and it's not necessarily that it was me that paid it some of them just came together at ah, this your final year you got born again in january oh it's better than nothing you are welcome so what's the issue now my school fees how much do you have one thousand how much is left forty thousand no believers let's come together let me tell you don't let anybody make you hate the church hear what i'm saying don't let i know that we have issues i'm not saying we don't have issues are we together but don't make anybody when we started this ministry our fun our jokes our time out everything was among believers it's why you see the marriages in this ministry very solid and powerful are we together very solid and powerful Is God speaking to you? Stability through fellowship. That God is revealing, he's, he's experientially revealing himself. Please, sisters, let me say it again. Don't marry anybody. Don't even say yes. Don't say let's try two months or two months. No, don't even do one day. Don't marry anybody that is not connected to any spiritual family. Even if he tells you he's born again. I repeat, don't marry any man insult me but just listen any man this i love you i love you thing this we're in the end times the devil is 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 destroying people's destinies you will be unfair not just to yourself but to the children that are coming out of you that's how you have all these people go around deceiving these girls that they are christians before you know it the moment they get married they say i hope you know you understand that me when it's cold i take a, 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 a this thing and the lady saying, I never saw, I said, is this just because I gave a little break? The, the house of God has a system that ensures you get it right. Well, it's my job to teach and say what I'm saying. It's your own job to listen and hear what I'm saying as a word from the Lord or stubbornly decide to do whatever you want i will always pray for you even if you crash land i have loved you with an everlasting love but my advice is that it is better to be happy by listening are we together thank you pastor Femi. number number three still on point one remember i'm teaching on the keys that create stability in your work with god and the first point we said was an experiential revelation of God and we broke it down into a few points number one is that he, the Word of God can help you experience God number two the family of believers are you ready for number three number three now hold on please pay attention here if this is where we stop tonight then media this becomes part one are we together this becomes spiritual stability part one I doubt if we'll be able to finish because there are four points but the third way of knowing God experientially is through your pain and challenges write it down I want to seriously teach here Psalms 107 we are going to read verse 6 verse 13 verse 19 and 28 6 13 19 28 actually the whole verse there I want to make you love your past tonight not necessarily past and all you know many times we men of god teach hate the past leave it yes but i want to show you there is something from your yesterday that can reveal the god of your tomorrow they cried unto the lord when not in their comfort they cried unto the lord in their trouble and what did he do he came in as a deliverer next verse verse um what now 13 please give us verse 13 still 107 psalms 13 they cried unto the lord again in their trouble what did he do he didn't deliver them he saved them are you seeing different dimensions they cry unto the lord their trouble makes them to cry unto the lord let me tell you this brothers and sisters i hate to be a bearer of bad news but there is something about your pain and the knowledge of God. There is a relationship between your tears. There is a relationship between your challenges and your disappointments. And the unique revelation of God to you. Hmm. Pain 
and challenges force force us to need and prioritize God write it down your pain and your challenges they have a way of forcing you to need and prioritize God there are many of us it's not that you have left God but sincerely he's not a priority and so certain times when when certain things shake you and hit you all of a sudden you will remember that they, I, I need to run back to God I need to make things right with them I don't believe that God goes around causing people pain and sorrow no the Bible says every good and perfect gift but because of our human nature God utilizes every unfavorable moment let me tell you a spiritual man is one who can turn both glory and pain into something that helps him to know God we have this we have this um, we have this level there there's something about believers we frown at pain when believers go through challenges and sometimes the church again we are the ones who bring these kinds of things come Sam all of a sudden something happens to Sam maybe he loses a loved one are we together and God forbid Sam just an example and or something happens to him there's disappointment somewhere and you hear believers come ah, ah Sam didn't you hear God what this didn't this happen didn't this happen whereas God is is taking advantage of that opportunity to say Sam I'm bringing you to a point where there is something about me you otherwise would not know if he did not go to the cave of Adullam David would never know certain things about God please listen to what I'm saying if you started that ministry from day one and 1,000 people came you will never believe God is a God of process and so with all your anointing for the first one year only two members the day you did your thanksgiving four came two left before the service was over and you just called your wife your wife said my husband i've never doubted you but kai today let me tell you the truth i know that when you told me god called you it's not i'm using i'm using husband i'm using a come wife now watch this i've never doubted you you said god god called you i said yes he called are you not seeing what I've, is it not is it not my my anointing that that made your your father sick that he allowed me to marry you why when i what are you are doubting me today and then all of a sudden the man is now touched and said lord if my own wife that is the surest member of my church is about to leave you better speak to me oh did you call me watch this that seven days dry will lead you to call on to god and god just comes and says son write this i it is true i have anointed you to speak my purposes to the nation a b c d where you will now be dancing celebrating 10 years anniversary when it's your time to give the testimony you are now going to say look i know that god is the lifter of men and you see the wife crying because she knows the other members are just laughing they came into the inheritance of the promise but the woman is standing there come darling are we together ah we want to thank god for our mother our this and she's just looking at them lord thank you if i left now this i would have buried my head in shame thank you jesus You have wasted your pain and your challenges and never knew God through them. You conquer challenges not by having a way out but by seeing God in them. In every challenge there is a dimension of God that is waiting to be revealed. Listen brothers and sisters. In every challenge there is a dimension of God. There are dimensions of God you may never know. he slay me yet will I trust him there are things you hear me say casually about God today brothers and sisters is because of the abundance of what I've gone through there are things that you can hear us say at the beginning of this ministry remember I told you how things didn't work there were times that I prayed I fasted I sowed seeds I've said it you've heard me say it again all my scholarships were spent on the kingdom never spent anything on myself 
There are times that my heavens will close. Oh God, is this tightening working or not? So when you see somebody come and say, Apostle, I've been tightening since January. Say, just January and you are complaining. <laughs> just January. And it's not like the favor closed. It's just that it's not yet enough. You better thank God and keep moving. There's something you know. Let me tell you. When you are too innocent in life, you can't be sent. Um, not, I, 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 no, the word is, I hope, I hope you understand what I mean by innocent. When you are scarless, you can't be sent. There is a level of scar that must be on you as a testament. You are never, please help those under the anointing there. You can never represent God scarless. There is a mark that is a testament. Are we together now? Yes. You've never been disappointed in your life. You've never had to cry in your life. You've never had to lock the door to pray. And as a man of God, just kneel down and say, Lord, I don't hate you, but right now, I don't know what to say. Don't mind all these people that lie all around and make it look like they've been laughing forever. It's a lie. Even Jesus wept. Say it after me. Jesus. One more time. Jesus the son of the living God, the word that creates everything, got to a point in his life where he said, Father, imagine if that part of Jesus was not captured for us. We'll feel guilty whenever we cry in the midst of challenges. But today, someone can lose a loved one and while we come, we'll not just say, why didn't you have faith? We will continue to teach on life, but we can join together and cry and not feel bad. Apostle, you are crying that somebody died. Well, what happened to the anointing that you walk with? No problem. You may laugh at me, but I, I, have, I have learned something with God. That he's not just a mighty God. He can also be touched with the feelings of our infirmity. So I will not just preach life and run away from you when you lose your loved ones. And say, no, 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 we are, are life-giving spirits. No, we are life-giving spirits, but there are women who died and didn't receive the promise. And the Bible joined all and called it faith. So we will cry together. Are we together? Oh, you come and all of a sudden you say, look, apostle, this and that and that and that, this and that. I mean, you know, not to feel bad, but I mean, look at this is how my life is. I made a stupid decision. I, I carried my salary and all of a sudden somebody scammed me and this happened. I'm just like, you are stupid. I've been drumming divine direction. No. Compassion. Pain and challenges reveal a dimension of God to you and through you that no other thing, no other dimension of kingdom living can reveal. There are some of you here, God will allow you purposely to stay without food so that the day you become a multi-millionaire, you can look at a family and they can say, Apostle, do you know we love God but as it is, there's no food this night. You will say, well, man, I prophesied to you, what else are you waiting for? No. Compassion is not natural with the natural man. Something must happen to a man to make him compassionate. There's nothing like I'm naturally kind. No. It is life that can bring someone to his knees. There are some of you here, for instance, you, by your normal standard, you probably would have been doing PhD now. Or even be professors. But some of you, you are in 300 level right now. It may look like it's a disadvantage, but there is something through that pain that is revealing God. Tomorrow, when you see somebody going through things and people say, This year, yeah, guys, say, No, I've been there. You know why I don't talk against men of God? They've persecuted me, and they do it every time. I know the pain of being persecuted, I know the pain of being lied about, I know the pain of being misunderstood. So I will never sow that seed, not to you, not to anybody. That's why I never insult the body of Christ. When you hear people do that, they are still innocent. Let them continue growing. I know the pain of what it means to see a young man with influence like this and say maybe they are using charm or demonic power. No. I know the pain of people trivializing your sacrifice. Everybody say pain. Say challenges. A lady that has entered five or six relationships and has been disappointed by all those brothers gave her heart gave her all and those brothers just made life miserable for her it may be bad but if you can see christ through your pain the sight of him will wipe your tears all of a sudden and you'll say thank you 
After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. What have you gone through in life? Hold on. I want to ask you a question, everyone listening to me. What have you gone through in life that has made you matured? What have you gone through in life that has stopped you from insulting men? What have you gone through in life, man of God, that will make money not to move you? What have you gone through in life? How many of you know that there is a way life whips you? That even when you see the result, you don't celebrate much again. Because you started celebrating without the result. You are already used to it. So if someone buys a car, you just say, Lord, thank you. And then you go back and say, Lord, who should I give it to? God says, oh, you can enjoy this one. And it doesn't move you. Because you have learned to rejoice in the midst of pain. I show you, a, a, this is a very mature spiritual teaching. I believe in prosperity. I will continue to speak over your life to be blessed. I remember one dear lady years ago, one of our, our dear, well not really part, but a dear lady. It was a few weeks to her wedding when something happened. Cards had been out. Several things happened. I mean, everybody was rejoicing like every other lady. She was happy, ready to rejoice. And then something just went terrible. Cut the long story short, wedding was cancelled. I remember when I got the text. In my mind, I said, no. My, all I was thinking about is this lady. Because the same friends that were dancing are the same ones that would run and say, ah, so you see that that's the thing you do you know this is a dimension of god through men that you need to learn that he's truly a friend that still get closer than a brother someone who can stand and say i will be with you and all of a sudden the moment they say crucify him they will join the people and say crucify you many of us don't have the wisdom of the spirit because our lives are too innocent that's why you trust anybody anyhow that's why you do anything anyhow please listen to what i'm teaching you tonight are we together i remember calling the lady when i called her as soon as she picked my call she started crying because people had called her were disappointed why didn't you find out a and b and c and d all kinds of nonsense see men ba you need to love god to love men men can be so wicked you will be justified to hate them are we together i called that dear lady i said sweetheart where are you i said i need to see you let's meet in the night and in her mind she thought you know most times when people hear my messages they believe that i'm a disciplinarian with all versions of whips i'm not a stupid person are we together yes God gives anointing, but our brains are still there. We are human beings. When I teach, I teach in a preventive way. That's why sometimes you can see I can lash it, but when you are meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, you are dealing with real-life issues. We are humans. It doesn't mean it's not an excuse for you not to listen. To just say, okay, so since there's another dimension, there is hellfire and there's mercy too. All created by God. Are we together? I remember calling that lady and when she came, I was seeing her inside a car and the first thing I did was to just hug the lady and she began to cry and I didn't say a word. I just allowed, sometimes don't stop people from crying too early. These tears you see, is not just what comes out in her eye, it's a language. And this lady said, Apostle, why would God do this to me? And I said, no. Every time we don't understand God, we give thanks. Is something I learned through my own pain. It's not like I, I learned it before I read it in the Bible. Whenever you don't understand God, just give thanks. Why me is not a wise thing. Lord, why is my church not growing? Why did this and that and that happen? You give thanks. I remember comforting that dear lady. And I told her something. I said, every time God closes a window, check well, a door is about to open. And I remember when that lady was going to get married. Oh, it was with honor. It was with joy. You know the kind of joy that will make you forget the pain of yesterday. Listen, let me speak to someone.
there are many of you who you have not learned to see God in your pain you have not learned to see God in your challenges I'm encouraging you tonight when you look back don't look at the problems continue to look Mary Magdalene was looking at a graveyard and she saw Jesus there Jesus is also in the grave he's not just on the throne she came to the grave and was looking who goes to the grave only dead men there are no living people in the grave but when you stand through that grave you can see Jesus looking at you to say you may have been abused when you were young you may have gone through all kinds of things but don't be ashamed of it I am raising you with an anointing tomorrow you are going to have a foundation one uncle deceived you here and don't worry and all of a sudden you are healed you are strengthened and you can rise up and be a blessing as believers both our glory and our pains are still weapons that can bring him glory is God speaking to someone today sometimes I share some of the testimonies of yesteryears not because I'm stupid everybody has his reputation too I share some of these things and it's amazing how some of these messages comfort some of you because if you just see all the things that God is doing today you may think just because you are anointed you are shielded from it nobody is immune from tears Jesus wept every other person in him will weep too there are times that life can push you I've wept at funerals of people here I have had to comfort people we have lost loved ones things have happened around but even at that even when we cannot explain we still say Lord thank you Lord thank you can you lift your voice in one minute and just say Lord thank you even in the midst of the pain in the midst of the pain Lord I went through unfavorable things I trusted a man who disappointed me I trusted my boss he disappointed me Lord I thought by now I would have graduated and standing before me are five carryovers I thought I would get first class my last result I thought I would be promoted and I was driven but I give you thanks I give you thanks I may not understand what you are doing in and through me but Lord I know that you do all things I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing. in life have added to my experience added to my age 
not. That's why you see me respect elderly people. I am not stupid. There are some of you here when you see us honor people, you say, What is there? Because your blood is hot. They paid your school fees. They gave you pocket money. You entered 100 level. By the end of 100 level, you have gotten a scholarship. Your result came out 4.5. Your perspective is too innocent to be used. Keep coming. One day something will happen. By the time you graduate and for five years, there's no job. You will now know why people write prayer requests here. For now, you say, ah, what is there about prayer requests every month? It's because everything in your life is paid for. The day your father look at you and say, young man, after this month, as we are clocking 30th of this month, you are packing your load and you are going. And you will think he has an honorarium for you. He will just wave you and say, my old father just did bye bye. And I, the same thing I'm doing for you. And for the first day, you will sleep under a tree. That's the day you open your Bible and say, no, I must get this thing. Don't waste your pain. Some of you would have entered certain anointings by now if only you could look at God through your pain. There is, the Bible says, for we know, the rest may not know, but we know that all things, how many things? Talk to me, say all things. All things. Walk together. Apostle, what kind of life is this? I graduated since 2013. I've been loving God. There's no work now for me. Is it that I don't serve God? Apostle, I love God. I love the things of God. But not one guy in my whole life, there's no gentleman that has come to say, ah, you're a beautiful lady, I want to. Am I cursed? <clears throat> it's because you are becoming a mother of nations, not a wife. And so God is saying, I need you to have the kind of compassion that will be required for a mother of nations. Today I can minister to people because every time I want to be wary, there is always something God can use from my past. People say apostle is humble. I'm not humble. It's a revelation of God that has kept me like that. The moment I want to lift up my head, God just has to show me one vision of one night I could not afford Gary. And he said, where, where is the pride coming from? Your past can help you maintain your glory. Your past has something in it that can help you keep your glory. When you see a man of God blessed and consistent and stable, there is nothing that is natural like that. There are many of you, you will not have listened to God. Every time they talk to you, you are stubborn towards instruction. So God allowed you. And for one year, like the prodigal son, you went away from mentorship and instructions and you saw the casualties that it brought to your life and now God comes back again and says can I now help you and you say Lord please I will never leave you again are we together we'll stop here tonight make it part one we have part two there, there, there's something very deep that I want to share I'll share with you next week or whenever whenever it is that we have the opportunity Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I made certain covenants with my life at certain seasons of pain, not luxury. There were things I went through in my life and I vowed to God. I said, Lord, if you ever prosper me, I will not let one person die of hunger in my presence. I would not have said that. If money and all these resources just came cheaply, I may be part of those like you people running your mouth at every family. Irresponsible people. Look how simple it is to prosper. So there are times God can allow you. You go through this. You pray. You fast. No door opens. So that when he blesses you with 10 naira and says give that 10 naira here. You don't want people to lick your shoes just because of that. There are certain anointings. There are people who got certain impartations early in life. You see that? early in life and it made them proud what is there about this in fact right now i can even show that the power of god will move one two three four and they make all kinds of things mismanagement of the anointing then one day god will leave them and you find out for one year it looked like your heavens were closed you go for a meeting you live there asking did god call me in the midst of your pain 
God begins to show you the visions of the foolishness and the pride. You insulted every man of God because you had more revelation than your local pastor. You insulted him all this, this, this dull reverend doesn't know anything. And God kept watching. When that heaven closed towards you, God will now say, go and meet that reverend for prayer. He's the one who will open your heavens. And you drag yourself in shame like somebody that has finished fighting wrestling. And the reverend looks at you and says, you... I had you talk nonsense. God said, you better apologize there. When you learn it, like Samson, the anointing comes back again. But this time around, you know the value of the anointing because you believe that you, you are too precious, you won't lose it. You kept reading books that ah, this and that happens. The day it left you, you don't need to ask whether it goes again. You learned a lesson by yourself. There are some of us who were very innocent. We insult every mother. You see somebody's mother insult the mother and say, Kai, this woman said this and that. I sat down near her. Ah, she didn't put any perfume. Kai, what kind of a smelly, you know, this koinonia. And God is saying, no problem. It's because you had a father who was a this and that. All of a sudden, another government will come and they won't give him appointment. And your friends will say, ah, where's our jeep now? He said, no jeep again, no. And then when they leave you like the prodigal son, then you come back to your senses. And the next time God gives you a jeep, you don't just say, come and see jeep. You say, come and see God's faithfulness. It will suddenly become God's faithfulness, no longer jeep. On these things. Whether you are standing, whether you are at the window, whether you are everywhere following online, just go ahead and connect. Don't allow the little inconveniences to distract you. It's a very serious prayer. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Lord, increase my greatness. Increase my greatness. Comfort me. Increase my greatness for the sake of my family members. Increase my greatness for the sake of the gospel increase my greatness for the sake of the ministry the church you have committed increase my greatness for the sake of the lost souls millions billions of them increase my greatness for the sake of having your purposes preserved within a territory hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed let me just talk about one key there are many but for tonight just to add to what I've shared, just one key that can help us grow in greatness. Greatness is a system. Remember that the kingdom of God operates on mysteries and systems. Say after me, mysteries. Say after me, systems. The kingdom of God is systemic. God never does the same thing twice. When he does a thing once, he creates a system around it for continuity. Are we together? He never created the plants and the animals twice. He did it once and put a seed in it for reproduction. He made one man, one woman, never to make another one again. Are we together? There is a system. So if your life is to excel, it must be built on systems. If your life is built on miracles, as much as you are going to receive them, miracles are a sign that something went wrong and the sovereignty of God is intervening to correct. We were never designed to live off miracles. Listen very carefully. If you live off miracles, you will live a frustrated life. We live off principles. We live off the systems of the kingdom. The systems of God create predictability. They are an attestation to his justice. The Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne never mistake a miracle to mean that's how god wants it to continue a miracle is a stepping in of god to correct something that shouldn't be you are working properly when your life is systemic are we together first corinthians chapter four please Give us verse 1 and verse 2. Let's talk about just one key here, faithfulness. Say after me, faithfulness. Second Corinthians chapter 4. It says, let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ. Paul is speaking now. And stewards. Paul uses a very interesting language. Not, not owners. He calls them stewards. The word steward is the word caretaker. Caretakers of the mysteries of God. 
Number two, it says, moreover, it is required in stewards. If it is true that you are a steward, there is a requirement. And it says, moreover, it is required in stewards that a man, whoever says he is a steward, must exhibit a character called faithfulness. Faithfulness. It says, must be found faithful. There are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence, their current financial level, their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things but they lack this quality, faithfulness. In the kingdom, you grow. It looks simple but write it. In the kingdom, you grow and Jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say sir double portion of your anointing and i said look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is working i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that have been produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of god in business people in young people in students in whatever dimension of life that you be faithful listen very carefully be faithful be faithful never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth you are only wasting your time no matter how flamboyant the results are is a mirage anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking is joking i repeat is joking anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking there must be a track record in life your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12 jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12 it says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of 
the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished he would now rush to them and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and cobble he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it true riches are you getting what i'm saying now in our world today if you have money you can buy everything but god is saying that money itself like you sell phones money is a product too there is something that can buy it it's called true riches so when god tests you let me tell you what this is saying let me use um let me bring out a thousand naira look at this this is one thousand naira do you know god can arrange favor come pastor femi i can see him already warming up to be a very can i mean look at the see how sharp he's looking praise the lord now watch this do you know that in your walk with god a time can come god can just open a door for you hundred thousand comes you are not rich this is unrighteous mammon he's testing you you are rich when he gives you what can buy this you are not rich if you have this this, this is nonsense anything can happen set this on fire you can't pack the ashes to court and say this was one thousand true riches is what can buy this product not shoe buy this this one so he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and you say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize 
where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained there is nobody that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say aha this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it it should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking i said my god my god these these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise don't forget that men may not know while you are looking at this but there is a god who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of god should not rise are we together many of us want resources as i've lifted this one thousand now many of you have been looking at it you are not even hearing me again listen you are not faithful if you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can god give you this and say let me have it back and you say lord it's yours it's proof of faithfulness lord after all it came from you i i you took me from nowhere soaking gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of god has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where god will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook 
or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one on one it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of God who start in ministry. Everybody they see is their colleague. Take it easy. Move gradually. No, I'm anointed. If not because of condition, don't I have a better revelation than Kenny? And God keeps you there. Say, stay there. I just caught a new revelation. There's nobody to hear you because there is no track record. You can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why God keeps him there. Faithfulness all he may say is god bless you god lift you god anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance i just finished pieces in the book of ephesians and you remain there for many years is god speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness Matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you Matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 I just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his Lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou hast been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient I'm coming I'm not ashamed to say God is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me I will teach I will make Bible study notes and God is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the Spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 
for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have it's a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that hath and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the Lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what I'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens 
you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah Years ago, I had a conversation. We we're about to pray with a gentleman, and he asked me a very honest question. He said, Apostle, I've come for Koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people. And he asked a question. He said, Can you reproduce these results? And I said, That's not me to answer. You are asking time, not me. Keep watching. And I think two weeks ago, he sent me a text. You know, just joking. I'm, I'm just saying it. And he's just sent a text. And he said, Apostle, you are dangerous. I say, I'm not dangerous. The laws of God are dangerous. It is not me. It is the laws of God. Whoever will keep these truths, it will work for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if you are afraid of yourself, trust his laws. And watch them shock you. And make a wonder out of your life. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. In a few minutes now, we're going to begin to pray. And many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic. It is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you. There is a system in the kingdom. We make our boast first in the Lord and then in the power of his might. His might, the power of his might, the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think he's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah i challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust god to go back and say lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of judah my trust is in you alpha and omega my trust is in you i am that i am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle it said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble it says and your paths through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it it says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at him water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea 
in that rent challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah i ah. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and called this ministry and put all of these things, it's not just a ritual. There is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained. That every time you come before God, he must open a way. So don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say, I went to every church. I don't know what the church you went to believe. But in this sanctuary, there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i'd like you to believe 
there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again and this is the song we'll be singing forever oh is the lord oh is the lord listen it is our confidence in god and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you what for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it People had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of God is powerful praise the Lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word 
there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the Lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful Lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace grant me the grace hallelujah just pray one prayer lord change my story visit me tonight lift your voice and pray pray with faith change my story visit me visit me tonight hallelujah tonight is an unusual service because time has gone we're going to be very very fast very very fast at that um, like I told us we're going to start praying for the sick we'll start by praying for the sick and um, now this is how we're going to do it because of because of those of you outside don't worry you don't worry wherever you are you will be attended to are we together you will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service it's not just limited to healing but we're going to pray for the sick now now we're going to do this very fast and um, please those that will be ministering let's let's do it very fast it's not in how long listen let me tell you something about the anointing it's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency just a touch is enough for the anointing the same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is 
remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick god bless you Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. The honor. Yes, Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we praise your holy name. For you are great, you do miracles so great. Yes, there is no one else. There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you Saying you deserve the glory, say you deserve the glory and the honor, Lord, and the honor. So we lift our hands, so we lift our hands and words as we praise. As we praise oh, 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 yes, you deserve the glory. Why we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we pray your holy name give you your the You are great. You do miracles. 
Nothing, there is no one else, Lord. There is no Take your place. Every other 
great are the name fade away Your name. 
say after me in the name of Jesus. We are praying now, please. We are praying. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight i challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone lift your voice and begin to pray every force every force nothing will stop your lifting this is a season of lifting in the name of jesus Every song shall be broken. You will the victor's run. Say in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern, Papo Sabalakatopa Shabren Negadea. In the name of Jesus, say after me in the name of Jesus, every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace, every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Every Make sure you are praying every dimension, every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life upon my family and destroy every planting that is not of god lift your voice and pray let your fire the visitation of your fire the visitation of your fire upon my life upon my life pray let your fire fall upon my life let your fire bring a separation lift your hands I'm about to pray for you now we are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils there are lives and destinies 
that are under the yokes of darkness it's time for the devil to give up are we together are you ready to shout that name that is above all names let me tell you i want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of god in your life at the count of three i want you to shout that name jesus everywhere and as you shout that name the sword of the lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire Open destinies now. Shake it to katakata. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Inside, outside. Open destinies now. Open destinies now. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a horn and I'm seeing fire burning it. Please be sensitive. This is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families. He said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What's yes thou? He said four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, but I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata, under any kind of demonic siege, at the count of three, that horn, that symbol of authority that has tied your family, that has tied your life, it is uprooted. One, two, three. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. I release that fire now. By the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Pako Seketo Shatariata, Embreke Teke Toka Sata, Shabeke Teleke Tabata. I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost, anyone here whose life is under siege, be delivered now. Hallelujah. The Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness. But then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces its barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies its barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of Jesus ah, I tell you all I see is just fire that's what I'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now 
by the fire of the Holy Ghost I declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the Holy Ghost overflow one I'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply Jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of Jesus I'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that Satan has rendered barren I stand by the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree and declare be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi, who is Kemi? Kemi. Um, I may not, maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like, it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh, I didn't, I'm saying, this is, I'm saying, I know that Kemi is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is, you are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Yes, Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. Yes, you sir. came. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, sir. You came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. You truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, sir. You heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing a new dimension a new season my dear there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i stir up that spirit that dimension i open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit in the name of jesus as i'm praying this i'm seeing number 11 the same thing that came on this lady the anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy. Where are they? I stretch my hands right now. Eleven people. Eleven people scattered inside and outside. In the name that is above all names. Receive that spirit. You need it. I stir it up from your spirit man. I stir it up from your spirit man. The grace for prophecy. Makatos Kabarakata. Sons and daughters. Stepping into dimensions of prophecy some of you you have only had dreams only dreams but i shift you to dimensions of visions prophetic visions you will never be the same i'm still praying this i'm still praying this there are people this is your call but no anointing has ever stirred it in the name of jesus i shift you in the spirit into that anointing the very anointing the seat of the prophetic i move you by grace in the name of jesus christ i activate it i activate it that dimension i'm praying i don't know why god is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the Spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life 
for your destiny in the area of the fivefold i declare let the anointing of the spirit locate you as it locates you the lord begins to prepare you where are they receive that grace receive that grace receive that grace Hallelujah. There is a dangerous spirit. Our time is up. Hold on. But there is a spirit that I want to rebuke now. I just saw written in the air rejection. Hold on. Many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you. You stand, you are watching and an opportunity come. Rejection is not just a state, it's a spirit. Lift your hands. Don't pray, don't do anything, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. That's the instruction the Lord is giving me. Just lift your hands, just do what I'm asking you to do. In the name of Jesus, many of you will be surprised now. There are people, it's like a yoke. I'm seeing like cowries, these cowries that they use. That's what I'm seeing. And in the name of Jesus Christ, as the power of God is smashing that rubbish, that's how many people who have been despised, been despised. The Bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you. It says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations. Right now I stretch my hands from the front to the back. Overflow one, two, three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family. At certain seasons, everything must happen. Either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct. You must have a child before you get married. Or something, someone will rape you. Someone raped your mother. Someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns. In the name of Jesus. At the count of three, I want you to shout Jesus. Lord, I pray that as your people shout that name, every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter 
délai. Alléluia. My dear, come. This come. This is your first time here. Where are you coming from? You're coming from Abuja. Yes, I want to pray for you. You had the prayer I just said we should pray. Yes. That prayer was was for you. Don't be embarrassed. Eh? There is a spirit of delay that must live your life. You are a great lady, but I see delay. Come. It's a demonic spirit. And if you are not delivered and you get up and go to Abuja just like that, it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God. But I lay my hands upon your head. And in the name of Jesus Christ, the spirit of delay, I call you by name. Let this lady go now. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit, go now. Live her life forever. In the name of Jesus. That lady wearing lime cloth, you, this one, come quickly, please. Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything by the Spirit of the living God. I'm hearing a name, Doris. I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus My dear, look at me. Witchcraft. I'm stretched. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you. I stretch my hands and I declare. I'm seeing an altar catching fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it by the Spirit. I stretch my hands. That's what the Lord is saying I should do. I stretch my hands. It catches fire now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Doris, look at me. Where are you coming from? From Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Is taken from my life. Is taken from my life. Forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. From, hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing, I don't know what the condition is, but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so, your father has not been paid. It's something they have been pursuing. Please make sure you are honest. Who is that? Come. Your dad, where is he? He's in Lagos. You too? Where is he? Do you believe that if I pray for you, a miracle will happen? Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. 
no don't I, if, if i pray most of you is not it's not that word you are just coming just because you want it may be related in the name of jesus i'm i'm just praying for you as i'm touching you, you see let me let me tell you something brothers and sisters you see this touch you see this touch just this touch you see there is power in it it's just that we are very carnal people do you understand after service you can hug me and jump on me but now what is on me is what makes this touch different you see that you can you can have it is not just a touch maybe a touch for jamboree no 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 you can i can lay my hands on you right and then something can come upon you i can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change sometimes you see me just speak and you think it as as i pray like this you see watch your life and see what it becomes are, are you getting what i'm saying now that's 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 the point the word of god that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you when it rests on you like a hen over her, her the eggs it will stay there until there is a performance this thing you see is not just power it's authority it's authority there is authority in the spirit it's not just power it's authority are you, are you getting what i'm saying now so it is it is a grace it's a gift that god can give a man he said for i am a man under authority i say to one go it's just that many of us just sit down and we keep watching I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you it's just that we are carnal we are carnal so we just feel that until you make contact with the man of god your life will not no 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 i don't have to give you a word of knowledge the anointing that you see this anointing through words through words i can speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god as i'm speaking over your life if you believe you will be surprised are we together now yes a miracle service we may not have all the time to minister the way we want to but this word if all i do here is to just come and speak i told you about the creative dimension of prophecy men are made by the prophetic word that is on them what is on you is what compels creation to respond to you in a certain way a man can lay hands on you and not lay anything everybody ministers according to the dimension of his grace my dear this lady looking at me come the lord is saying i should tell you what happened to queen esther in the bible will happen to you i don't know who you are but the lord is saying i should tell you that what happened to adasa queen esther in the bible i release that grace upon you in the name of jesus christ so brothers and sisters i like your heart to be open the if you come here and you are prayed for i lay hands on you and you miss the prophetic sessions you really miss the miracle service you see that you miss the prophetic session help is coming hold on the lord is showing me something help is coming i'm seeing help is coming that's what the spirit of god is saying help is coming help is coming help is coming it will surprise you help is coming when god says help is coming it means people are coming men are coming men are coming i'm saying it again men are coming this is a word for somebody help is coming in the name of jesus christ the lord is saying i should prophesy to someone it won't read june it won't read june this is what god is saying i don't even know what i'm saying listen god gave you a word god is saying you will not enter june without that miracle happening and in the name of jesus christ whoever that person is i release that word let there be a performance let there be a performance in the name of jesus christ let there be a performance i'm seeing i'm seeing a young man that came here 
you you are not based here you came from another city and there is the call of god upon your life but i'm seeing that not only is there a call of god upon your life i'm seeing that there is an anointing mm -mm, i'm not saying you should come out this is there are many people that belong don't worry the anointing will will find you there is an anointing i've not done the impartation yet but there is an anointing that is coming on that gentle man it may spill over to others but it's for one you will go back there is a revival within your territory that has been allocated to you your person in the name of jesus let the anointing of the spirit find that person now You may look ordinary, said the Spirit of God, but when my grace comes upon you, I will do wonders through your life. The Lord is saying you may look ordinary, but when my grace comes upon you. You see, the anointing of the Spirit is the maker of men. It is not about what they want to do. In the name of Jesus, whoever that gentleman is, I bring you into that grace. I bring you into that anointing by the power of the Holy Spirit the Lord is giving somebody a kind of anointing here listen let me describe for you how it will work if you hold someone's hand and pray on an issue it is done that's how the anointing will work if at all you hold someone's hand except you don't hold the hand of the person and pray for that person whoever must carry this anointing I stretch my hands now by the Spirit in the name of jesus christ may that anointing be so lavish upon your life you will see strange testimonies as you agree with people they will note you they will note you for commanding results through prayer hallelujah let's pray for finances just allow me we'll round up I, I i i apologize already in advance i will do this very fast god is already visiting his people um there is a grace for finances i will continue to pray this until i see a manifestation of what i've seen in the spirit not only are there people here who are called just people men like um, ejimi that are called into the ministry of kingdom finance there are people who may not be called into that ministry but they are kingdom financiers because of that call and anointing upon their life the holy ghost will shift them in a certain way to grant them access you may look weak you may not have one naira in your pocket but listen i want you to believe me as i pray for you lord jesus where are these people that you are speaking to me about let the grace let the unction that makes for this kind of possibility let it be released upon them in the name of jesus christ let that grace be released upon them help him help him be sensitive gentleman please you would have injured him for nothing be sensitive huh in the name of jesus that grace i called him because the lord said i should minister to him that anointing is upon him i'm still praying there are people i'm seeing like coins being dropped on the hands of people in the spirit this is this is it, like a token of that grace that call lord in the name of jesus christ i pray now everywhere in this congregation and outside if you are called into this ministry i declare you may not look like it but i release the grace on you may the lord align your understanding about finances may he align your understanding about business in a strange and supernatural way that will cause you to command strange abundance i declare that as a result of this prayer god will connect you to strategic individuals strategic individuals hallelujah there are people here who have please listen we're rounding up there are people here inside outside 
you have what we call the mantle of a savior you may not be the firstborn in your family but all the while a grace has been following you because you represent an altar i'm going to pray right now there are people whether you are young or old if that grace if you are the one that represents the altar of god in your family then it's time for that altar to begin to speak right now in the name of jesus the son of the living god for everyone here you represent the epicenter of the purposes of god in your family i stir up that altar i put fire upon that altar now let it begin to burn that from your secret place you begin to shift things in your family from your secret place you begin to command and manipulate realities from the realm of the spirit i make it so i declare it so in the name of jesus christ hallelujah hallelujah then i know there might be many people this may be the last personal case i'll deal with and then we'll pray there might be many people here with this case but there is a particular woman here you are barren you are a, there's a particular woman not that you are standing for someone you yourself Please help them. Eleven years, no child, madam. Yes. How long? Seven years. Seven years. Yes. Eighteen years in total. You are standing here before the people of God because you believe that God can step in. You, madam. Eighteen years. You've Eight. been barren for how long? Eighteen years. Eighteen years. Yes. You. Yes. Madam, will you believe if I tell all three of you that according to the time of life, you will return with your children? No, 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 no. It's not amen. The question is, will you believe? Will you believe it? Madam, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Jushi. Where is that? Jushi at the back of enemies. Where are you coming from, madam? You are coming from Kaduna? Yes, sir. Who is this lady? Are you married? You've been barren too? Yes, sir. You too, madam? Please, if you are not married, don't come out here. If you are coming out for... If you are, if you, it's someone you are standing for, just remain there. Please remain. If you are standing for someone, I will pray. But if it is for yourself, madam, you too? Look at me. You are trusting God? How long have you been married? I've been married for like five years, but I have a child, but I've been trying for like three years now. You have a child yes, already? Sir. You yes, just sir. want another one? Yes, sir. It's all right. I'll pray for you. These ones don't have any. The devil is a liar. Madam, don't be embarrassed. You are not standing before. There's nothing to be ashamed of. You too. You too. You are trusting God. How long have you been married? Yes. Two years. No, you you had a child, you were even rejoicing, and you had a miscarriage. Yes. When? Last year. Last year. Yes. And from that time, this has affected you. Yes, I have to pray. There's something wrong with your stomach. Yes. The doctor already told you. I wouldn't say it in the open, but then this is what is killing the baby. Hold on, madam. Um, you had miscarriage, not even in tw in 2000 and in 2014 child, uh, that's what i'm saying you had a, they had to go and remove the baby yes because the baby died inside pieces, your stomach yes the baby pieces like yes. this inside your stomach yes sir. god is going to give you a child Amen. 
My dear, look at me, this lady. The mercy of God needs to speak for you. You, you love Jesus? You love Jesus? I'll pray for you. But you are not in need of a child. What you need is mercy. The mercy of God. Many of us don't know what the mercy of God is. The mercy of God is not for sinners. The mercy of God is his dimension that causes him to veto whatever limitation it is to come to help you. So when we say mercy, it's not just because you have to be a sinner. There are certain dimensions of God that are only revealed to you at the platform of his mercy. He said, thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. I want to pray and prophesy to all of you and agree with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please go back and tell your various husbands that you were prayed for. I, I love men. I respect husbands. But many husbands don't love Jesus. They don't know Jesus. After their wives return like this and say, my husband, we just went for a program. They don't know what program. And they cancel out all of these things. It takes two to agree. Are we together? In the name of Jesus Christ, Madam, put your hand in your stomach. I take away this demonic thing. Let it go now. In the name of Jesus, it disappears. Madam, I pray for you. The Lord opens your womb. In the name of Jesus, Madam, by the grace of God, you carry your child. In the name of Jesus Christ, I remove every growth from your stomach. In the name of Jesus, I declare that you return with your miracle. Madam, look at me. God is going to use you. Amen. You are not just going to give birth to a child. The hand of God is on your life. It doesn't look like it, but there is nothing in this life that will ever satisfy you except the service of God. You will love God and serve Him. And with this miracle God is going to give you, every other woman you pray for over the issue of the fruit of the womb, you will see that God will open up your stomach. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, you will arise and have mercy upon this, my precious sister. In the name of Jesus, the voice of accusation that speaks against you, I silence it by the mystery of the blood. Now go and have your child. It's over in the name of Jesus Christ. It's over, my dear. Look at me. Go and prepare. You have a child now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit, let the grace of God speak for you. Madam, I pray for you. Help her, please. It's over right now. Carry your child in jesus name please stretch your hands towards the altar and let's pray stretch your hands in one minute you for yourself madam okay in the name of jesus christ it's all right madam no problem in the name of jesus christ i pray um you are trusting god for a child in the name of jesus christ somebody's sister is going to have twins hold on hold on hold on the power of god will come on that person now as i'm speaking for the sake of your sister carrying twins this is twins the lord himself there's one more person left i'm hearing the voice of children babies crying when it stops then i know that it's over i'm still hold on i'm still hearing it there is still one more person family i'm like i'm hearing the voice of children lord in the name of jesus wherever that family is i pray that you locate them right now by the spirit of the living god you locate them right now you locate them right now i'm still praying you locate them right now in the name of jesus 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 stretch your hands and let's pray please begin to pray in one minute and say father whatever I have dropped here just keep her there I'll pray for her that's all right begin to pray in the spirit and declare that whatever you have dropped here turns to your testimony in the name of Jesus I'm laying hands here and I'm agreeing with you Shalakato prakato zeze me akashi anakatos ende leketo sabragato si atakato shafranda hasi anabaladas impossible situations 
Mabrakato Zadia Shana Hasana Malakatosh Rekete Kete Kebara Hasosia Embrakato Shala Barakatos Kade Brende Kete Kalatos Yata Unto you that answers prayers shall all flesh come Mabreza Gado Jane Kelando Safria Hasabadash Ingredo Zedeko Shabara Katoski Adabalash Please pray Lord turn around our captivities like the streams in the Negev in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ let them say among the hidden the Lord has done great things for them the Lord has done great things for us whereof we are glad we sow prayers in tears and we declare that we reap in joy Lord I bow my knees to you and I cry visit your people 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 Hallelujah. This prayer you see we pray here is a very deep spiritual mystery. It's not a ritual. It's a revelation. Sometimes when I travel and I go, the Lord instructs me to do the same thing there. And the amazing testimonies this for me is one of the most thorough ways of ministering to people because this is a summation of the your truest desires because you wrote them by yourself is a representation of your pain and your expectations this is you standing before god through your request and i decree and declare as i stand and step upon this request i declare rise above every challenge in the name of Jesus Christ the same way I'm stepping on this in the name of Jesus that is how you are stepping on every situation I turn every request in this place into your testimony in the name of Jesus Christ hear me some of you it will be like you are dreaming the way you will see doors open in your life in the name of Jesus Christ every impossible situation represented here I cry to the God who is the God of this ministry that he will arise in power and surprise you for all those who have dropped their request online in the name of Jesus Christ the same grace that is visiting these requests is visiting their request in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Spirit let there be miracles in Jesus name please lift your hands everyone let me pray for you right now in the name of Jesus Christ listen you see every ministry let me tell you this it's an uncomfortable truth but it's true every ministry rises and stops at the spiritual level of lifting of the man of god wherever you stop spiritually as a man of god that's where the ministry rises it's impossible to lead a ministry that is higher than your own level of grace and anointing it doesn't work that way it can't work sustainably that means that when the man of god shifts in anointing and rises it means that everyone genuinely committed to that grace and that vision not based on your personal um, your personal press but by the implication of connection you should also rise do, do we agree do you believe that yes I have seen the grace and the glory of God and the authority of the kingdom multiply and rise in my life this year like never before and i want to pray for you in the name of jesus right there where you are inside and outside and all those connected wherever you are spiritually i prophesy to you rise and i shift you to a new dimension i shift you to a new dimension you have walked in miracles before but in the name of Jesus, may your hand do wonders. You have taught the word accurately before. But in the name of Jesus, may your tongue from tonight become the pen of a ready writer. 
in the name of Jesus Christ you have handled some level of finances before but I shift you into figures that you have never seen before in the name of Jesus Christ you have experienced favor before but I stand here in the name of Jesus and I declare a new order of favor you have had God before but I program your ears to hear deeper dimensions of the voice of God. I pray for everyone here, inside and outside. The mantle that causes men to be honorable. May that grace come upon you. May that grace come upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen. This ministry has never gone up and come down. Never, not once. It keeps going from glory to glory. I declare, let that be the definition of your life from today. Spiritually, financially, academically. For those who are students, I decree and declare, the grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you. The grace for extraordinary excellence I release upon you. Anyone here trusting God for a job, a noble job, I stretch my hands. Between now and next miracle service, return with your testimony. In the name of Jesus Christ. And anyone here due for promotion, I decree and declare by the finger of God, step into a new dimension of promotion. The fire that is upon your altar that is the secret of your life the secret of every man's glory is the fire that burns upon his altar when nothing is burning you will just be a talkative for nothing you will read and teach and nothing will happen I pray for you in the name of Jesus the mystery that preserves fire upon the altars of men let it work for you let it work for you I found the calls of your prayer life. I found the calls of your spiritual life. I found the calls of your word life. This is a prayer many people don't desire. I pray for a baptism of spiritual hunger. I say it again, a baptism of spiritual hunger. That the Lord will expand your appetite for spiritual things. Every kind of arrival mentality. Every kind of spiritual complacency. Where there is no, imp there is no desire to press for the deeper things of God. Satisfied by the little results here and there. I declare that the Lord plants a fresh hunger. The hunger that can take you on a three days fast just to study the word and pray in the name of Jesus Christ some of us the grace to fast has died you fast by 10 you are yawning your life away and you can't pray I pray for you now in the name of Jesus the spirit of gluttony and uncontrolled lust for food I cause it from your life in the name of Jesus Christ And finally I pray for you in this strange season where God is lifting men and changing their stories as I'm praying for you I'm praying this one for myself too in the name of Jesus may you rise to a level where all those who knew you will turn and say this one is the finger of God in the name of Jesus Christ I'm calling on people who want to surrender their heart to Jesus now. Please everyone stand. Please everyone stand. No move. Let me tell you something. One of the assignments of the church is to harvest souls for the kingdom. We must be passionate and desperate and intentional about souls coming to Jesus. Are we together? There are people here who are saying apostle 
if you will lead me to Jesus I'm not too proud I'm not a rebel I can come to him genuinely please listen carefully overflow three overflow two one by the roadside and those who are following online the church is gradually becoming very very unresponsive to the need for salvation you are a man of god here take the issue of the salvation of souls seriously if you are not saving souls as a church you are this in fact is sin it's not just wrong it's not just disobedience it's sin it is important that we continue to partner with the spirit that people come to jesus it's not just a ritual to show we are spiritual it is the only way that their lives can be salvaged first eternally and then to live a life of victory here are we together there are people here you may have been born from a christian background a number of you love jesus christ but you are saying man of god i have never truly made a commitment for jesus i have i've seen people do all this but tonight i want to make that decision some of you are saying man of god i love jesus but i need a renewal in my life i just need a fresh touch i know that my life is not the way it used to be and i want to straighten out my ways with god if you are here and you belong to these two categories aside from overflow three i'll just request for time's sake that you move forward to the front of your projector screen overflow one overflow two the roadside and inside here i want you to come out right where i am here wherever you are god bless you quickly please we have one minute for this wherever you are jesus is speaking to you you must be born again no one will force you but you have to win this war tonight you have to win this war tonight god bless you quickly come boldly come like one who is coming to receive an award don't come as if you are attending a funeral this is a miracle of miracles god bless you apostle what if people know me and they see me leave all those people this is the business of you and god make your way to the front quickly those coming from outside please let's clear the way for them so that they hurry up let's clear the way for them god bless you god bless you as you come quickly god bless you as you come you need jesus please don't come out here to pretend come out genuinely from your heart you must be born again every single one of us had to pass through that process jesus said i am the door not a door the door the door the only door every other route is a, is, is is not correct you have to follow through the door hallelujah thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for coming out to make this declaration i want you to know that this is a very noble declaration lift your right hand after me and say this passionately and truthfully say lord jesus if you're joining them please come quickly join them say lord jesus i love you say it again i love you with all my heart i believe that you are the son of god that you died for me you shed your blood for my sin tonight i receive you i receive your life i as i receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness and i declare that i reign in life in the name of jesus i move forward ever and backward never the grace to stay the grace to grow the grace to be useful is mine tonight in jesus name lord jesus i stretch my hands towards these precious people they have come before your people making declarations making commitments to live for you to love you to serve you i pray that the grace that makes this a possibility let it be released upon their lives in the name of jesus i declare your sins forgiven i declare that the power of sin the power of satan is broken over your life you go from glory to glory in the name of jesus christ amen and amen i appreciate you i want you to follow the gentleman waving his hands all of you just follow him in concert there will be a group of people to just talk to you address you very quickly and then you will be back to your seat let's appreciate the lord for tonight dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. 
and that is I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity and then don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus I'll see you again bye